Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Salvaje. Here is my 100 tips video for Anthem. In this video, I'm going to be giving out a lot of beginner tips, a lot of tips that the game doesn't tell you about, things that I wish I knew as I was leveling up to 30. And of course, we're also going to be talking about a lot of general tips and a couple of terms that the game doesn't really tell you about. Anyways, with that said, let's get straight into it. As always, a like on the video is appreciated. And for more tips and in-depth guides, check out the Anthem Guides playlist in the description. With that said, let's jump straight into the video. Tip number one, challenges in Anthem give you a couple of rewards, but you have to go through a lot of sub-menus to actually see those challenges. The best way to not go through the menus is to go to a specific challenge and then press the tracking button on it. Like that, all you have to do is open up your Cortex and then go to track challenges to see the challenges that you're tracking. And the tracking button on PC, it's F. I don't know what the tracking button is for consoles because I didn't play Anthem on consoles, but on the bottom right corner of your screen, the game should tell you what the tracking button is. Tip number two, when using a Storm, Ranger, or Interceptor Javelin, as you're flying in the air, you want to make sure that from time to time you press the melee button and then the dodge button. And basically, this is going to give you the ability to fly for longer amounts of time. Tip number three, the crafting system in Anthem isn't that complicated. In fact, it involves a lot of challenges. If you want to unlock higher rarity blueprints for your gear, or your weapons, you just have to do specific challenges. Let's say that you want to unlock a higher rarity blueprint for one of your weapons. Go to the Cortex, go to Challenges, and then go to Weapons. Click on the weapon that you want a higher rarity blueprint for, and the game should tell you what is the challenge that you need to do to unlock a higher rarity blueprint of that weapon. And the same thing applies to gear. You want to click, uh, you want to open up your Cortex, I mean, you want to go on Challenges, and then you want to go to where it says Gear. You want to click on the gear that you want a higher rarity blueprint of, and the game, of course, will tell you how you guys can unlock that higher rarity blueprints. Tip number four, you can activate some abilities to enter hover mode. Like for example, with the Storm Javelin, you can actually activate Frost Shards and you will enter hover mode immediately. Tip number five, make sure that you melee and dodge while in midair while using the Interceptor, Ranger, or Storm Javelin so that you can switch directions very quickly. It's basically the easiest way to make a U-turn as you're flying in the game. Tip number six, make sure that you loot every single plant or every single thing that you see in the mission. This is just going to get you into the habit of passively farming as you're getting multiple tasks done, and it's basically going to make so that you don't have to farm for any materials in general. Tip number seven, when starting the game, you definitely want to make sure that you speak with Prospero, like that you can unlock the ability to craft after you do a little side quest for him. And you want to be unlocking this ability as fast as possible so that you can start working towards those higher rarity blueprints. Tip number eight, before starting a mission, get into the habit of opening up your forge and equipping new stuff. Number nine, make sure that you level up faster by playing with others. According to Bioware, when you play with friends, you get a little bit of extra XP, so definitely make sure that you do that. Tip number 10, headshots actually matter in Anthem and they can make a difference. An easy way to get headshots is to freeze your enemies and then easily take your time to go for headshots. Tip number 11, make sure that you use your ultimate very frequently. In Anthem, you actually get your ultimate pretty quickly and now that I'm in Grandmaster 1, the biggest mistake that I'm seeing is that people are just afraid to use their ultimate because they're saving it for a boss. Even if a boss does show up, you're still going to be able to get your ultimate fairly quickly. So again, make sure that you are using your ultimate. Tip number 12, you can launch an Edition and then head on over to the social tab and then by pressing right click on your name you can actually choose one of the 10 banners that the game comes with and of course you're going to have extra banners if you do a couple of challenges or of course you got the Legion of Dawn edition. Tip number 13, let's say that you activate an ability but you don't want to use it anymore, you can actually switch weapons like that of course the ability cancels itself out and you don't waste it. Tip number 14, make sure that you salvage duplicate loot at the end of the mission screen. You absolutely want to do this like that, of course, you don't stockpile on a lot of useless loot. Tip number 15, not all inscriptions and not every single thing that you loot is the same. Some of the, some of the loot that you get, they have different bonuses. So make sure that you're dismantling the ones that have the useless bonuses, if of course they're duplicates. Tip number 16, you can add things to the cortex to get more lore in the game. Tip number 17, you can't get status effects if you have shields. And that's why, of course, having shields is very, very important in the game. Tip number 18, what is armor? A lot of players seem to be confused what armor is. Don't worry, armor is just another term for health. Your armor is basically the green health bar. Tip number 19, your shield comes before your armor. And your shield is basically that blue bar that is above your green bar. 
Tip number 20, jump, melee, then jump again to cover a pretty decent distance with the Ranger. Tip number 21, you absolutely want to maximize your flight time. With the Ranger Javelin, you can jump, dodge, melee, jump, and then dodge, and then activate flight. And this is basically going to let you cover a big distance before you actually have to start flying. Tip number 22, if you see an enemy that's pretty far away from you with the Ranger, remember you can jump, dodge, melee, jump, and then melee again to actually cover fast distances and end up landing the melee on that enemy. Tip number 23, when speaking to people, you can actually press escape to actually escape the dialogue. Tip number 24, the storm actually has a really long jump. However, you need to make sure that you're holding down the jump button so that you can actually go pretty high in the air. This is very, very helpful, specifically if you want to hover with your storm. Tip number 25, make sure that you hold the jump button, then you melee, and then you dodge, and then you jump again so that you can cover a higher distance, I mean a longer distance with the storm javelin. Tip number 26, there are two types of important gears in Anthem. We have primer gear and we have detonator gear. Primer gear actually has a circle right next to it. That leads me to tip number 27. Detonators actually have a star right next to it. Tip number 28, if you prime something using a prime gear, you can then hit them with a detonator gear so that you can, of course, trigger a combo. That leads me to tip number 29. Combos in Anthem do more damage, so you want to make sure that you're getting as many combos as possible. Tip number 30, and this tip is very helpful. When you're playing the Interceptor, make sure that you have either a Marksman rifle or a Sniper rifle in your secondary slot. Like that, when you're weak on health, you can help out your team from a distance. Tip number 31, this helped me out a lot as I was playing in hard and Grandmaster 1. Make sure that after reviving a teammate, you actually press your dodging button just in case you have someone that is trying to shoot at you. Tip number 32, with the storm javelin, make sure that you place down a wind wall before you revive a teammate for extra protection. Tip number 33, you can actually revive teammates while your ultimate is active. Tip number 34, when it comes down to the tomb quest line, you can actually complete it outside of free play, such as doing contracts and strongholds and actual quick play missions. Tip number 35, the fastest way to find world events in free play is to be constantly moving. You don't want to camp in an area for too much. Tip number 36, the lower the power of your component, the less health and less shield that you're going to have. 37, the higher the power of your component the more health and more shield that you're going to have tip number 38 lmgs are really really good in anthem guys make sure that you use them tip number 39 talking to specific people in fort tarsus can actually increase your ranking by a bit so make sure that you're talking to everyone in fort Tars tarsus tip number 40 if you dismantle storm colossus ranger or interceptor gear you're going to get the specific parts for that specific javelin Tip number 41, make sure that you are using cover in Anthem. And I absolutely recommend that you guys play on hard and you use cover to your advantage because that's going to train you for the Grandmaster 1 difficulty. Tip number 42, make sure that you use your wind wall on an item that is on the high ground so that you can hover and have a wind wall for protection at the same time. Tip number 43, make sure you are watching those cooldowns when it comes down to your abilities, guys. Anthem is a game that you're going to be getting a ton of DPS if you're using your abilities constantly. So make sure that you're keeping track of your abilities. Tip number 44, the wind wall actually has health. So after enough damage, the wind wall is going to break down. Make sure that you guys keep that in mind. Tip number 45, when titans charge up their fist and when they have like a glowing fire around them, that's when of course they have a weak spot. So definitely make sure that you shoot those glowing spots on the titan so that of course you do more damage. Tip number 46, make sure that if you want to kill a titan very easily that you're either running a ranger or a colossus javelin because they're going to give you some pretty nice DPS potential. Tip number 47, very important for new players, titans actually explode when they are about to die. So when they are on low health, make sure that you keep your distance from them. Tip number 48, running over an ammo triangle will instantly reload your weapons. 49, make sure that you level up faster by completing feats. Feats is basically another word for challenges. The more challenges that you complete as you're on a mission, the more XP you're going to get. Tip number 50, if you activate your ultimate, you can actually regenerate your health and your shields. Tip number 51, you actually don't take any damage while you have your ultimate activated, so make sure that you keep that in mind. Tip number 52, if you want to salvage a lot of things, just go to the vaults because the vault actually puts a lot of the gear and of course weapons by category, so you're able to choose what you're going to salvage a little bit easier. 
Tip number 53, you can easily get weapon parts by salvaging weapons. 54, you can get epic, rare, and uncommon ember, as well as masterwork ember, by dismantling the weapon or gear of that specific rarity. In other words, if you want epic ember, just dismantle epic uh, rarity things. Tip number 55, you can actually go to your armory and then click on blueprint materials and that's going to tell you what materials you need to craft a specific gear or a specific weapon. Tip number 56, if you want lore on the gear or the weapons of Anthem, go to your armory and then of course choose the specific weapon and that specific gear and you're going to get a little bit of lore. Tip number 57, don't stay in combat too long with the interceptor, go in, get the job done, finish off the target and then of course use your triple dodge ability to get out of combat. Tip number 58, if you're a complete noob when it comes down to gaming, you can actually go to your Cortex and Anthem, click on tutorials, and that's going to teach you some basic tutorials that probably not a lot of people are going to make tutorials on because, again, that's just basic stuff. Tip number 59, the library is always going to give you a summary of what you have experienced in the story. So if you ever want to revisit the story or you want to see the story from the freelancer's point of view, make sure that you check out the library. Tip number 60, you can actually shoot your weapon as you're jumping an anthem. 61, reviving sentinels actually counts as a teammate revive. 62, aiming as you're flying will instantly place you in hover mode. This is very effective if you want to land a sniper shot, for example. Tip number 63, remember you can always activate hover as you're flying just in case you need to take a sharp turn, etc, etc. Tip number 64, what are support abilities? Support abilities are things like rally cry, targeting beacon, uh, win wall, etc, etc. 65, you can level up the freelancer, arcanus, and sentinel ranks by doing contracts for those specific uh, factions. 66, as soon as you get a javelin, go into free play, do a couple of world events, and that's basically going to give you some pretty decent loot for those javelins that of course you can actually take into a mission or the stronghold that you want to do for that specific javelin. 67, when using an auto cannon with the Colossus, make sure that you're aiming down sides if there's a lot of enemies right in front of you or enemies coming towards you like that of course you don't have to charge up your auto cannon. 68, your number one focus after you finish the main storyline is to finish all of the agent quests or side quests. Like that, of course, you can get to level 30 as fast as possible. Tip number 69, talking to NPCs in Fort Tarsus actually isn't necessary as you're doing the main story or after you finish the main story, honestly. So it's not a big deal if you don't want to talk to them. Which leads me to my next tip, tip number 70. It actually doesn't matter what choice of dialogue you choose with these NPCs, so don't be afraid to be a dick to them for no reason. Tip number 70, the javelin unlocks are at level 2, 8, 16, and 26. However, something that the game doesn't tell you is that the wait from 16 to 26 is going to be somewhat lengthy. So make sure that the first three javelins that you choose are the javelins that you want the most. 72, make sure that you are applying the right combat tactics on the right type of enemy. So for example, if you're fighting melee based enemies, make sure that you're taking advantage of hover as fast as possible, or you're of course choosing the high ground. 73, flying closer to the water will actually extend its flight time because the engine aren't going to heat up. 74, you also have a longer flight time when it's raining with your javelin. 75, always be on the lookout for water waterfalls. The water that is splashing from waterfalls will cool your engines instantly and will let you fly for a longer amount of time. 76, I absolutely recommend that you guys either choose the Ranger or the Storm Javelin when you first start out or the Colossus and the Interceptor Javelin because when you first start out in Anthem, you always want a Javelin, in my opinion, that's really good at taking care of uh, weak enemies and that's also really good at dishing out massive damage to high priority targets. 77, you cannot have two of the same components. 78, make sure that you make your loadout around your components. If you have a sniper rifle component and not a sniper rifle, that's kind of an issue because you're not maximizing your loadout. Uh, 79, turrets have a weak spot on their back. So make sure that you're getting behind turrets and you're shooting their weak spot so that you can finish them off as fast as possible. Tip number 80, so how do you get masterwork blueprints? Well, at the time we'll be making this video, to get a blueprint for a masterwork weapon, you have to actually unlock the masterwork gear and weapon and then you have to complete specific challenges for that masterwork weapon or that masterwork gear and then you're going to actually get the blueprint for it. 81, the Colossus Shield has a pretty decent amount of health. If, if a lot of enemies are focusing you, just bring up your Colossus Shield. Also, you can stand in front of someone as they're reviving a teammate with the Colossus Shield to sort of give them some protection. 82, if you're using the flamethrower with your Colossus, you can also follow it up with a melee if you have a lot of enemies around you to of course trigger a nice combo. 83, when your javelin is electrocuted, that means it's going to overheat faster. 84, you can actually hold the back button while you're flying so that your javelin slows down. Tip number 85, if you need to make a left turn very quickly, remember you can dodge as you're flying. 
86, being on fire causes you to take damage over time. 87, being filled with acid makes you take more damage from outside sources. 88, being frozen, well, it's obvious, basically means that you can't move. 89, did you know that javelins all have a passive ability? The ranger's passive ability from my understanding is that he's going to get more damage out of combos. Tip 90, the storm's passive ability is that after you land a combo, he spreads the elemental effects of the enemies that you landed the combo on. For example, if you land a combo on a frozen enemy, enemies next to that enemy are going to get frozen as well. 91, the Interceptor's passive ability is Aura. As you guys can see in this gameplay example, after I land a combo, I am able to get Aura Acid. And basically what that's going to do is that every time that I hit an enemy with my melee, I will be applying the Acid effect on them. The same thing applies to other elemental effects. If I land a combo on an enemy that's on fire, I will be getting a Fire Aura, which will cause damage over time as I melee the enemy. 92, the Colossus passive ability is actually really OP. When you trigger a combo with the Colossus, it also triggers an area of effect explosion. 93, what is a multi-kill? A multi-kill means that you have killed 8 enemies within a 10 second time window. 94, Enforcers actually have weak points in the back. Enforcers are the people with the shield of course, and the weak point in the back is basically a tank that they have. So make sure that you shoot those tanks. Tip number 95, while using the Interceptor, make sure that you triple dodge, melee, jump, melee, jump, and then triple dodge to cover a fast distance without actually having to activate flight. Tip number 96, if you want fast movement with the Interceptor, you need to make sure that you are mastering the melee jump and melee triple dodge ability. I'm going to go a little bit more in depth into that when it comes down to my Interceptor guide. Be on the lookout for that. 97, if you want to experience the Anthem story, all right, at the time we'll be making this video, the best way to do that is to make sure that you're playing all of the missions on easy and that you're playing the game on private. 98, you can't fly when you are carrying an item or a relic, so keep that in mind. 99, there are multiple daily, weekly, and monthly challenges, and you can see all of those challenges by opening up your Cortex, clicking on challenges, and then of course going to your daily uh, monthly and weekly challenges to see of course what are the multiple challenges that you have to do last but not least number 100 you can actually get coins and ember by completing multiple challenges such as daily challenges weekly challenges challenges for gear and challenges for weapons but anyways guys that's pretty much it for my first 100 tips video on anthem i will be dropping another 100 tips video when it comes down to javelin based combat soon so make sure that you're subscribed to the channel for that make sure that you check out the anthem guides and tips playlist in the description below and please guys drop this video a like because this video took me a long time to make and a lot of effort i hope you guys found the video helpful and i hope you learned something new see you on the next one